welcome all to our channel gtech fluent so we are going to start with the full stack developer question and answer series and it will be the different technology that will consider like dotnet core angular dotnet core web api sql server then also we will cover the c sharp 8 and other features and today we are going to share with you the mostly asked interview question on the dotnet core it must to know by the every developer so in this video we will cover like mostly asked top 15 dotnet core interview question so let's start and crack the round and the first question which is asked by every interviewer and that is what is asp dotnet core so asp dotnet core is nothing but the new version of asp dotnet and it is a open source and like it is not the upgraded version of asp dotnet it's a completely rewrite from basic you can say from the scratch next you can say it is a cross platform what does mean by so cross platform nothing but it is like it supports windows mac os and linux operating system and it can be used into a device like cloud and embedded iot scenarios basically it can work with dotnet core and the dotnet framework so please understand here the dotnet core and asp dotnet core these are the two different thing so it is suitable for developing the different application like cloud based web application mobile application and iot based application so in the dotnet core we have a command line support to run create and build our application hope you understand what is mean by the asp dotnet core so now let's move to the next question and that is what are the feature of asp.net core basically when we come to the asp.net core any interviewer expect from you to understand like what are the feature you are going to be use from asp.net core so now let's see what are those feature we can use or you can say you need to understand so the first feature of asp.net core is supports multiple platform that makes asp.net core different from .net framework what does mean by supports multiple platform so asp.net core can run on windows linux and mac so you don't need to create or build the different application for a different platform using different framework the second feature is fast and lightweight asp.net core is not using system.web.dll so if you work with .net framework or asp.net application we are going to be use system.web.dll that is used for browser server communication so it takes the time to communicating with each other so this is reduce the request pipeline and improve the performance of our application next feature is ioc container or you can say the built in dependency injection so if you work with the previous dotnet framework we have to include different tools like autofac or unity to work with the dependency injection but in the dotnet core we have inbuilt support for dependency injection and it can be easily integrate with your application next we have the hosting so asp.net core can be host on multiple platform with any web server such as is or apache it is not dependent only on is as standard dotnet framework next we have built in logging framework in dotnet core application you get microsoft logging inbuilt extension included into your application it makes us login fast so you can use either console log file log or as per your need so hope you understand the features of asp dotnet core so now let's move to the next question which is mostly asked by the interviewer that is startup class so now let's understand what is mean by this startup class basically if you work with the dotnet standard framework the startup class is like the global dot axs file and that file we are going to be used for our configuring our application same thing is used by the startup dot cs file class so basically startup class is the entry point of asp dotnet core application so every dotnet core application must have this class so this every application means it can be console application it can be the web application or it can be the 
Razor application. So you can work with any application, but we must have the startup file. So it is used to configure the services which are required by the application. So what are the services we require that is configured into the application? We will see the startup class file. Basically, one of the most important role for startup file, it is used to configure the request pipeline. And it is configured with the help of middleware component. There is again question asked by the interviewer. It is mandatory to have the file name with the startup. We can change our startup file by configuring into the program.cs file. Now let's switch to the Visual Studio and let's see the startup file, how it looks like. I have created for this our video tutorial. So if you see in the root, we have this startup.cs file. And if you open this, we have some configuration here. As we see, so we have this configure service method. And here we have, we added the service for Razor pages. So this is the service I added for my application. So you can add any service here for our application. Next point we see like, it is used to build the request pipeline. So where it is building the request pipeline? If you see the configure method, we have some middlewares injected here. So these are the use developer exception, then HTTP direction, a static file. So this is nothing but the request pipeline, how your request is processing by your application. So this is configure into the configure method. Last point we discussed, like, can we change the startup dot? So you can go to the program.cs file. And here in use startup, you can define your own file name. So that is the way you can change your startup.cs file for your .NET Core application. So before moving to the next question, I want to share, we have a website where we are putting the tutorial into the text version. And I have shared the link into the description. You can go and check the website and put your feedback into the comment. And if you go to the website and open the URL that www.tutorialstar.com. So once you click on the link, you will get into the tutorialstar.com where we have the tutorials on ASP.NET Core, consists the ASP.NET Core as well as the ASP.NET Core MVC application. Also, we have a tutorial on Entity Framework Core if you want or learn, you can go and check that. We have the tutorials on Angular 11 also. We have a different book recommended and mostly used book for the beginners and the advanced level. So you can go and check. And we have the interview questions here. So next question, come up with the sequence of that startup.cs file. Like what is the use of configure service method? So basically this method is an optional method and it can be used to configure the services that is used by the application. For example, we saw in our application, we have used add Razor pages uh, services into our application. So on that way, you can add any service. So the configure service method is called before the configure method. This point we need to keep in mind because services should be loaded or assigned before the request pipeline is executed or configure method is executed. Configure service method is called only once one of the important role for configure service method is we can define dependency injection into this method. So now next question is what is mean by the configure method? So this method is used to add the middleware component into the I application builder instance, which is available inside the configure method. This method is used to specify how the application will respond to the individual HTTP request. It accepts I application builder as a parameter and also two optional parameter that is I hosting and logging factory. As we discussed, we have the logging. Using this method, we can configure built-in middleware such as a routing, authentication, session. And if you want, you can use the exception handling here as well. So that is depends on you, how you build or configure your request pipeline. Next question is what is middleware? So this is one of the most important question of .NET Core application. And if you are liking this video, please like or subscribe to video and share with your, and again, if you have any question other than this, please put into the comment box. We'll try to cover that as well. So now let's understand what is mean by the middleware. 
so in asp.net core middleware is a piece of code that are assembled into the application pipeline to handle the http request and response the middleware component has access to the both incoming request and outgoing response that means you can manipulate the request and the response for particular request using middleware so middleware component handle the request and decide to not call to the next middleware in the pipeline let's say you added the authentication middleware and that is not passed then middleware has to decide whether it is control is sent to the next or not one of the most important point about the middleware is that must be executed in order they added into the pipeline so we need to take care of sequence and execution of the middleware otherwise you will not get the result as expected so if you want to understand more about the middleware you can check our video on middleware so where we have cover step by step implementation of the middleware and each and every point about the middleware you have to understand so now let's see the next question the next question is a routing in asp.net core and their types so basically routing is not the new thing to the asp.net core so in routing in asp.net core is a process of mapping the incoming request to the application logic that are reside in a controller and method so asp.net core map incoming request based on the route that are configured in our application with the specific configuration such as we have a default value message handler and constraint so all the routes are configured when the application is started in asp.net core we have two types of the routing first is a conventional routing the routing is determined based on the convention that are in a route template and run time it will map the request to the controller and action or the method second attribute based routing the routing is determined based on the attribute that you have set on your particular controller and the method routing is a very vast concept so if you want to understand the routing in more detail you can check our video on routing so we have covered this in detail so now let's move to the next question so this is very common question asked by the interviewer like what are the json file available into the asp.net core so there are the multiple file we have a app setting dot json so basically this app setting dot json used to store your configuration like web dot config so it is used to store your custom application setting like db connection string logging any setting related to your application so app dot setting can be determined or defined as per your environment like development uat and production you can create multiple app dot setting dot json file as per your environment next file we have a bundle config dot json so it can be define the configuration for a bundling and minification for your project launch settings dot json file so it is used to for a particular project so it is used to define the project specific setting associated with the each profile into the visual studio next we have the brower dot json so brower is a package manager of web so it is brower manages the component that contains html css javascript font or even image files then we have the package dot json file and then we have the global dot json file so let's move to the next question so next question is a what is dependency injection dependency injection is included into the dotnet framework also so it is a very important term while working with any application basically dependency injection is a software design pattern that allow us to develop the loosely coupled code so dependency injection is a great way to reduce tight coupling between the software component so it's also enables us to manages to better manages feature changes and other complexity of our software so we can say it makes code maintainable so there are two types of the coupling we have like the tight coupling and loosely coupling so we need to consider this thing while implementing the dependency injection we have detailed video on the dependency injection 
how to implement the dependency injection into the .NET Core. So we are going to provide the, all the video link into the description. You can check and comment if you have any question or suggestion on that. So next question is, what are the service lifetime? So this is an important question about registering your dependency into the .NET Core application. When we are registering our services, then we need to register with the correct lifetime. So the built-in IOC container manages the lifetime of the register service type. It automatically disposes a service instance based on the service lifetime. So in ASP.NET Core, there are three options for the service lifetime. First, we have a singleton. It means only a single instance will be created. And that instance will be shared between the all component that are required. The same instance is always used. Next service lifetime we have is a scope. It means an instance is created once per scope. A scope is created on every request to the application. Basically, you need to understand when we issue any request, the object is created for the once for that particular request. Same object is sharing between the particular request. Next, we have a transient. So instance is created every time if the requested and never shared. That means whenever you create the instance, getting the dependency, you will get the new object. So this is an important thing you need to understand on this to how to register the service, where to register the service and what is the correct lifetime of your service. Let's move to the next question. So this is some tricky question asked by the interviewer, like can ASP.NET Core work with the .NET framework? And the answer is yes. ASP.NET Core application work with the .NET framework via .NET standard library. So we need to make a use of the standard library. In ASP.NET Core, they have introduced the Kestrel. It is a cross-platform web server built in for a ASP.NET Core. So it is a default web server, but you still can make a use of IS, Apache and other. So there are some advantage of the Kestrel, lightweight and fast. It supports the cross-platform and supports all version of .NET Core support HTTPS and we have an easy in a configuration. Now let's move to the next question. So the next question is what is in-memory cache? Most of you heard about the caching in ASP.NET Core. It is now possible to cache the data with the application in memory in the simplest way of caching by ASP.NET Core to store the data in memory on web server. This is known as in-memory caching into the ASP.NET Core. So it is a service that you can incorporate with your application by using dependency injection. So it is iMemory Cache interface instance to construct the in-memory cache service via ASP.NET Core dependency injection. So the next question is how to enable the session in ASP.NET Core. The middleware for a session is provided by the package inside microsoft.aspnetcore.session. To use the session in ASP.NET Core, we need to add middleware into the ASP.NET Core request pipeline. So you just need to add the middleware into the ASP.NET Core pipeline to use the session into your ASP.NET Core application. Next question is, what is WW root folder in ASP.NET Core? In ASP.NET Core, all static resources such as CSS, JavaScript and images files are kept into the WW root folder and that is default. Statics files are typically located inside WW root folder and it can be accessible by default into the root path. So let's look at to the WW root folder. So in a root of application, we have a WW root folder and if you expand this, we have the file CSS, JS, library and other file which is required for the application. So basically, to use the static file, we need to make a use of use static middleware, then and only you will able to access the static file for your application. If you have the static file inside the WW root folder and this middleware is not configured for your application, then you will not able to access that file. This point you need to keep in mind. Hope you guys like the video on the .NET Core question. So if you have any suggestion question, you can put into the comment. We will try to cover. So we will meet in our next video. Thank you.